In the previous part, Rain and others defeats the illegal miners. And as a reward Gaunt's promises to make a dagger and gauntlet as per Rain's request. For the meantime they decides to rest. In the town, Rain is with Sora and Runa while Kanade and Tanya are still sleeping. A stranger stops them and demands Sora and Runa to be his brides. Both of them refuses in disgust. The stranger is Edgar, the son of the town's lord. Edgar is humiliated by their rejection. He threatens them to come with him. Or else he will make his guards kill every person here. Rain is in disbelief. Furiously he asks how a person who is in charge to take care of his people, can threaten to kill them. Like a spoiled kid, Edgar sees everyone as a tool to make his desires come true. And doesn't care even if it means killing his people. Rain notices the guards have taken everyone hostage. He cannot deal with these many guards without letting anyone get injured. Sora and Runa ask if Rain wants them to help him. Rain doesn't want them to use their magic powers. Because if they did, their identity as fairies will be disclosed. So, he comes up with a plan. He uses fairy special skill and cast multiple fireballs at the guards. Edgar couldn't believe what just happened. And in panic run away. The people show their gratitude. However, an old lady suggests Rain leave this town, or else his and his friend's life will be in danger. At the inn, Rain tells Kanade and Tanya about what happened. Tanya is furious and asks Rain if he wants her to burn the mansion Edgar is living in. Rain refuses because they need first need evidence or else they could be executed for treason. In Edgar's mansion, he orders a knight to bring information on Rain and the two girls. Edgar calls a slave. To release his frustration he beats her. Rain with Kanade go to the Order of Knights to report the assault. But he soon found out every knight is being bribed by the Lord. A knight who earlier heard their conversation approaches Rain and Kanade. She introduces herself as Stella, Vice Captain of Knights. She is disgusted to see the knights being corrupted. And emphasis that the knights only works for the king. After hearing Rain's conversation, she realized that it was him and his familiar who defeated the Ebon Fangs. She reveals that this region knights captain is Jalay. He also works for the Lord. And with his help, Edgar is able to slave and kidnap beasts and people for his entertainment without receiving any punishment. Stella wants Rain's help to bring justice. Rain believes Stella is lying and is setting a trap. However, Kanade assures that she does not sense any mal intention from her. So Rain also agrees to trust. And they both shake hands. For the next few days, Rain using Stella's team members spreads a rumor about the evidence regarding Lord and his son's illegal activities being kept inside a warehouse. Jalay knows this could be a false rumor but knows they can't ignore it. As soon as they enter, using his new gauntlet Rain fires at the knights. However, he is unable to because of Jalay's keen sense. Jalay is furious to see Stella committing treason. He attacks her without any mercy. Stella tells that she couldn't see the person she admired losing the sense of justice. Stella without holding back deals a heavy blow and knocks him out. Edgar is frustrated to know Jalay and the other knights are arrested. He doesn't know how this happened. And beats the slave. The girl cries and begs for someone to help her. Arios covering his identity comes. He tells Edgar the person behind the arrest is Rain. And if he didn't take any action, Rain will snatch away his people, his wealth, and his women. So as a solution, Arios gives him the mysterious ring. By using it, Edgar will stop Rain. Stella with other knights goes to the Lord's mansion for an inspection. The guards stop them and ask about Jalay. Stella tells that because of corruption and injustice, he is behind the bars. The guards start to panic to know this. And warns that it's the Lord's order to keep away everyone from the mansion. Stella doesn't care about the Lord, because it's only the king's order that they follow. The guards with no option left, call more guards and attacks them. In the mansion, the Lord is worried to see the situation. He asks his son about it. Edgar assures him that everything is under control. And for the meantime tells him to leave the mansion. On the side, Rain with Sora and Runa uses the fight as a diversion to enter the mansion. Runa uses material search. She senses an incredible amount of magic power. It is greater than theirs. And that's why they believe it is a mythical species. Rain tells both of them to find the kidnapped slaves and take them to safety using their teleportation and he will confront the mythical species in Edgar. After they both left, Rain looks for Edgar. Sensing an incredible amount of power, he enters the room. She found a demigod covered with bruises behind the bars. The demigod is scared and requests him to not hurt her. Rain breaks the lock and immediately heals her. Her name is Nina. 
She gets emotional and thanks Rain. We go into the past when Nina was free and was worshipped by humans. But one day, Edgar notices a mythical species in a village. He tries to take her but couldn't because of Nina's magical power. So he takes the villagers as hostages and orders Nina to become his slave. Nina couldn't see the villagers hurt, so she agrees and put on the slave collar. In the present, when Rain tries to take off the collar, he is unsuccessful because of the vast magic power embedded in it. Nina tells Rain to leave her because she can't see him in pain. Rain tells her to trust him. Nina could see the kindness and allows Rain. Fortunately, with enough power, Rain destroys the collar. Rain is exhausted after using his power. Nina hugs Rain and thanks him for ending the suffering. Outside, Tanya and Kanade take care of the knights with Stella's help. After taking the captured people to safety, Runa and Sora join. Inside the mansion, they reunite with Rain. They are sorry to see a demigod in such an awful condition. The lord who is trying to escape is caught by Rain. Just then Edgar comes and uses the ring. A reaper appears and attacks Rain. Everyone is devastated. However, nothing happened. Sora is surprised because the reaper used a death scythe which can kill anyone. So to check something, Runa casts poison on Rain. However, he is still unharmed. Runa concluded that after taming her and Sora, Rain also received a special skill, nullification. With it, he can nullify any magic. To see Rain unharmed, Edgar is in panic. He sees Nina with him and starts to lose his mind. The ring senses a corrupt and disgusting soul. It devours Edgar and starts to transform. Rain senses an incredible magic power, and uses a fireball before it spreads further. However, the transformation is complete. Rain is terrified to see it's the demon who destroyed his village ten years ago. The demon flies away to destroy the town. Rain understands Nina doesn't like to hurt or see anyone get hurt. And tells her to stay with Stella. Nina agrees. Rain with others, go to the demon. Kanade attacks and Rain binds him. But still, the demon easily breaks free. Sora and Runa use flash impact. But the demon is unharmed. He calls his servants and made them attack Rain and others. For mythical species, the monsters are not much of a threat. However, because they are spawning endlessly, everyone is getting exhausted. Kanade, using an opportunity, rushes to attack the demon. However, she is blasted away by the demon. Rain rushes toward Kanade and heals her. The demon starts to launch multiple attacks throughout the town. Sora and Runa drive a light sword and paralyze the demon. Rain uses multiple boost on Kanade and Tanya. Both of them attack the paralyzed demon with their boosted abilities. And at last, Sora and Runa use judgment on him. Even after all this, the demon is alive. The demon summons flying monsters and flies away from Rain and others toward a top of a building. So that he can't be bothered. Rain understands they cannot just focus solely on the demon. He tells Sora and Runa to gather all the people in one place. And teleport them to a safe place even though their identities will be disclosed. Runa and Sora go to Stella and tell her to bring the people to this location. On the other side, Agatha and Mina tell Arios about the demon destroying the town. They are worried because the demons are the frontline soldiers of Demon King. And it's the duty of the hero and his party to defeat him. Arios gets angry and tells them to not teach him what to do. He explains that the only purpose of the hero is to defeat the Demon King, not these low-level demons. With no power to convince him, both Mina and Agatha apologize and tells Arios, he is right. At the location, Stella and her knights bring the people. The townspeople are shocked to see two fairies in front of them. They are hesitant to enter the teleportation circle. Because fairies have hatred toward humans. The old woman, who Rain earlier saved, tells everyone how kind and good they are. After she enters the portal, everyone agrees to trust them. At last, it's Nina's turn to enter. But she conflicts with herself. She neither wants to hurt anyone nor to see anyone get hurt. But also she doesn't want to be a burden on Rain and run away helplessly. So decides to help and run toward him. Rain, Kanade, and Tanya are dealing with the monsters. But because there is no end to them, they cannot do anything about the demon. Every adventurer from the town comes and starts to help. Gantz also arrives with his ultimate weapons and allows them to use them. With their help, Rain and others can focus on the demon. However, he is just too far. Rain wants to use teleportation. But Tanya explains that even with Sora and Runa's teleportation, it would take a few seconds to reach there. And by then the demon will know about it. 
the solution is to do instant teleportation. But because it requires a great amount of magical power, even the fairies are incapable to do it. Just then, Nina arrives and hugs Rain. She doesn't want to be a coward and wants to help him. Tanya and Kanade instantly realize that a demigod possesses great magical power. And with Nina's help, Rain can teleport toward the demon. Rain asks Nina if she will help him to get up there. Nina without any hesitation agrees. While Kanade and Tanya deal with the monsters, Rain carries Nina on his back and runs toward the demon. On seeing, Rain approaching him, the demon attacks. And fortunately, with Nina's instant teleportation, Rain avoids the attacks. And with it gets in front of the demon. The demon is surprised, but on seeing a demigod he understands how Rain pulled it off. But he is not scared of a mere human. Rain uses boost on himself. Just before the demon does anything, he binds the demon and starts to overwrite his control over the monsters. The demon tries to stop Rain however he is unable to. And soon the taming is a success. Now all the monsters are under Rain's control. The demon is in disbelief and tells the monsters to attack Rain. But with now Rain being the master, the monsters start to devour the demon. And after some time, the demon vanishes. The next day everyone begins restoring the town. Stella notifies Rain about the village in which Nina used to live is no more. The villagers left a few years ago and now it is abandoned. So Nina decides to live with Rain and requests him to tame her. Rain starts the taming ritual. And it's a success. And everyone warmly welcomes her. At the guild, Natalie informs Rain that he is promoted to C rank adventurer. Rain is surprised because instead of D he is promoted to C. Natalie explains that because he defeated an A rank demon he deserves this title. And with it, he will also receive a huge reward. In the town, Arios with his party comes and demands a week's ration. Because they are short in funds, they will not pay it. And tells that it is an honor for you people to help the hero. The people are shocked and can't believe what the hero is talking about. They just survived a disaster and barely have enough food for everyone. The shopkeeper gets angry and snaps back at Arios. First, he and his party didn't even help them against the demon and now, they want a week's ration without giving any money. Soon, everyone starts to yell at them to leave the town. And that the beast tamer was more of a hero than him. Arios in anger leaves the town, with more conviction to destroy Rain. Consider liking and subscribing this channel if you enjoyed the recap. Have a wonderful day ahead.